Hi, that Paul guy. And no, I haven't been posting as often as I want to or should be. And that's fair. So, uh, but today we're going to take a look at some more budget options. I, I say budget options, but in actuality, we're talking about like 150 bucks or less. Uh, a motherboard, last generation Intel motherboard is going to cost you somewhere around 100, maybe 120 bucks. And you can now get uh, some of these processors a lot less expensive. I think you'll end up paying less than 90 bucks for an i3. Uh, this one happens to be a 10100 or 10105F. Um, it's not overclockable. It does not have graphics on it, but you might not need it. It's four core, eight thread, pretty solid processor. We've talked about it on the channel before. In this box uh, is, well, this was an empty box because it's currently in that rig over there being uh finishing up benchmarks uh it's a six core 12 thread i5 11400 uh 11400 f same thing not overclockable i don't believe uh, no graphics on it so we're using separate graphics but um intel graphics yeah you're probably not you're probably better off getting uh, a cheaper video card anyway but that's not neither here nor there. What we're doing is we're testing this. This one comes in and around, the i5 comes in and around 160, we're at about now, 155, 160. So it might just be a tad bit out of the 150 range, but there's sales going on all the time. And uh, between this and say now we're getting down around the 3600, the, uh, the AMD 3600s and stuff like that. And, and some of these other ones that are getting down below, right at or right around or below that 150 range. It's not, you, you won't find it hard to find one of these that you can get for 150 bucks or less. So uh, that was the, my target. And we, we look, took a look at a couple other things. We took a look at uh, AMD's 3100. We took a look at the 4350, which had come down in price a little bit if you could get it. Uh, and a few other options to, in that 150 range. And uh, so today we're taking a look at the i5, the 10 or 11 400F. And uh, we're pitting it against what we already know in the i3 because I can put them on the same motherboard. There's some advantages. The, the 10th series Intel only takes PCI, PCIe 3.0 or it only gives out or it only is a, available for PCIe 3.0. Some of the old uh, newer Ryzen's and the newer Intel's obviously can do 4.0, including 11400F. The 11th series the 11th gen Intel processors all do PCI 4. And the reason why that's important is because some companies, not going to mention any AMD names, but some of them like to cut corners and decide instead of giving you a full 16 width bandwidth on your graphics card, that they're going to cheat and give you like 4x4, four four, which means that they're trying to push more water through the garden hose, but it's a smaller garden hose. Okay, so it, it will go quicker, it will have more pressure, and you can do the same type of thing. But if you have a bigger garden hose, you're going to notice a lot less pressure because it's just not, it's just not capable of pushing it through there. So it's a bad analogy, I know, but one of the problems that the 6500 and the 6400 from AMD have is they really, really uh, do a number if all you have is PCIe 3.0, such as this such as an old Horizon, such as any of your Intel platforms that are back, say you're doing a, a Dell Optiplex or something like that. There is a use case uh, that 6400, and we're gonna do a video on that too, uh, comparing it PCI 3 and 4, but uh, there is a use case for say a low profile that you can use in some of those Dell slim lines. But that's another video. I'm not gonna tease you too long for that one. Right now we're concentrating the i3 and the i5, and we're gonna kind of stack those up and see how they do. Now to test these puppies, I went ahead and used uh, you, what would you could you could arguably call a mid-range graphics card, but it's more than enough to let these these CPUs kind of run off and, and uh, run on their own and, and be able to tell a little bit better from one to the other. Uh, I also used the stock cooler. The stock cooler in both of these is identical or near enough identical. Uh, they look the same to me. Um, so I went ahead and I kept, and I used the same CPU cooler. That does make a difference. And I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna tell you why now, and we'll kind of talk about it again. But this 11400F, it did not like that regular CPU cooler. Now, the, the 10th gen, not a problem at all. Kept nice and cool. It's a little bit lower wattage. 
but this uh, six core 12 thread did not like it and it in some cases um, really pushed the temps up including uh, 86 87 degrees on the CPU in some benches and in others uh, got as high as about 95 which is really really cutting it close to the thermal throttling and uh, didn't care for that too much at all so if you are buying one of these and you do plan to I mean game on it or anything don't use the stock cooler I mean I know they say a lot of people say it's good enough and it won't it doesn't quite hit the thermal throttle but I'm telling you spend an extra 25 or 30 bucks and get you another CPU cooler if you're going with the i5 or higher in an 11th gen I'm just saying so as we go through these benchmarks here it's going to be pretty predictable and in most cases it's going to be anywhere from you know maybe five to fifteen percent better for the six core 12 thread than the four core from the last generation four core eight thread from the last generation shadow of the tomb raider 124 versus 137 i mean that's about what you'd expect a, a similar type of performance in borderlands 3 uh, Far Cry 5 saw very much the same thing. Far Cry 6, I'm also going to be doing soon. I'm going to be adding that in. I'm doing those benchmarks, but I haven't completed them yet, so I don't have complete charts, but they'll they'll be coming in soon. I'll probably replace Far Cry 6. Uh, I'll replace Far Cry 5 with it. Uh, I am also going to be trying to add Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk was one that really, really uh, took the temps way up. This had no problem hitting 94, 95 degrees uh, in the benchmarks for Cyberpunk. But like I said, I don't have full info for the 10105F, so I have to go back and, and also add some other stuff. Forza Horizon 4, very much the same type of story. I think it was like 168 to 184 for the, for the 1080 high. All these are 1080, by the way. Uh, well, I'm also going to be adding Forza Horizon 5 to the mix, although I don't, again, don't have complete testing on that, but I will have soon. Uh, World War Z and Horizon Zero Dawn, I did something else because as I was looking back through these, I was noticing that these for the 10 one, uh, I'm sorry, for the 11 400 F, uh, a lot of these were coming close, if not rivaling the previous generation or the previous, I guess, Zen 2, the 3700 X from AMD which is an 8-core 16 thread. We kind of compared before the AMD where you would have the 4-core 8 thread, a newer one, versus a little bit older 6-core uh, 12 thread. But now we're starting to see that CPUs from Intel, uh, even though they're a generation or two newer, are rivaling just the, the previous generation's uh, Ryzen CPUs as well. So um, it's actually making those, uh, when you get where you're looking at a CPU that's 150 bucks. That 3700, you can still, the 3700X, you can probably still find for about, I don't know, 300 bucks or so, and uh, 250 or $300, and the it's coming pretty, pretty close on some of these. Like World War Z, you can see it right here, and then again, we're going to go ahead and do Horizon Zero Dawn and see that, the, that it's getting really, really dangerously close in that territory. So what I might do is I might do a full comparison with the, 10, uh, the 11400F and the 3700X the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. I might do that comparison and see just how close those are. Obviously, the 3700X is not a budget CP, a CPU. The 11400 borderline is. So you could be saving quite a bit of money and get similar performance. Now, this is gaming type performance. This isn't going to be productivity. Anytime you're dealing with a lot of like video editing or you know some kind of uh, hand, manhandling large files or large objects, uh, you, you're going to need or more cores will do you better than you know fewer cores. So the 816 is going to do you better than the 612. But in gaming, I mean, they're, they're pretty darn close here. So... Um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to do that comparison pretty soon. So to kind of wrap up and kind of reiterate what I was talking about, this this CPU is solid. I like it. The one thing I do not like is the fact that Intel says, oh, yeah, you can use the CPU cooler that's in here. Now, first of all, we all kind of knew that was BS. Even though the coolers are getting better, it's still BS. You need to get a decent CPU cooler, even for an 11400F. Uh, or 11400 or something, even the mid-range Intel CPUs, you're going to need a, a separate cooler for. Uh, the AMD coolers, I don't have a problem with that. I can run you know that 3700X on its stock cooler all day long, and I don't have any issues with it. It might get up in the mid-70s, 
um, on that cooler or with the I got an AIO that doesn't get above the mid 60s so very very happy with that very easy but the stock cooler that comes with the Intel yeah yeah confirmed trash so the next step up for Intel we're going to be testing the 12100 uh, probably I don't know if I can get a hold of a 12100 F or stock or K I don't care which one it is that's basically the budget this time around we're going to be testing with DDR4 memory because I already have DDR4 I don't want to try to lay my hands on DDR5 even though I know that I will eventually use it uh, let me work on my budget a little bit and figure things out that way but we will be testing that and I also want to go back and since I'm looking at this 11400 and I'm testing the 11400 with a th against the 3700X, maybe I can do the same thing with that 12100 and see just how far a couple generations have come. Now, I will also be looking at what is basically the Ryzen 5 5500. Um, now, for those that might not know, that 5500 is the same processor as the 5600G, but they've taken the graphics off of it. So instead of just calling it a base 5600, they cannot do that because it has a different amount of cash on it. So the 5500 is the same as the 5600G, is a PCI 3.0, is built on Zen 2, I believe it is, or Zen, is it Zen Plus? No, it's built on Zen 2, um, and it does not have the same uh, doesn't have the same memory or the same cache that the normal 5600X would have. And so we have to measure that a little bit differently. So I can measure, I can go ahead and look at the 5500, uh, test that because I do have the 5600G and I can just basically put that through the same rigors as I would a 5500 without having to go out and buy it. Now, the reason why I mention that is because that is also, the 5500 is a budget CPU, but we'll explain that when we get around to it. We'll, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. We'll jump on that bed after we make it. I, I, what are one of those things anyway? But anyway, kind of wrapping up here. I know I'm starting to, uh, to just kind of ramble on and I don't want to do that. The uh, i3, the 10105 f basically 10 100 or 10 105 uh very very good cpu very very budget for under 100 bucks great deal the i5 11 400 is now coming down right around 150 so that's a actually a pretty decent deal and if you've already got a 10th generation chances are very good you can fit that 11th gen uh cpu right into that same motherboard so any of the 500 series motherboards should work out fine for you but uh yeah so we're going to keep on testing budget stuff video cards are coming down and they're getting affordable so now we might be able to pick up on some of those what kind of system can you build for say five or six hundred bucks that might be in our future too so a couple things coming up obviously it's been a while i'm trying to catch back up doing a boatload of benchmarking and just trying my darndest to, to catch back up and get things get back into the groove of this folks so that's what we're going to do uh, that is all i have for the right now uh, i will hit you up and, and ask you please subscribe please like the video all that good stuff don't forget to visit me on the other social medias one very very important thing i'm going to ask you, if you don't do anything else if you don't click on anything don't uh don't sign up for anything don't do anything else if you don't go looking for these cpus or anything just find one random person to be nice to today that's it it's easy that's all you gotta do hold the door open say hi wave smile something something nice okay if you pass by somebody say you pass by neighborhood kids at summertime you pass by neighborhood kids that have a lemonade stand buy lemonade even if you don't want it tip them a buck tip them two dollars whatever you know you might not want to lemonade. you might not like lemonade they're entrepreneurs they're trying to get something started they're trying to do something with their lives Make sure that it's worth the effort. Do something nice for them, okay? That's all I got for right now. So until next time, folks, I'll see you later.